I'm so excited to talk to you guys because you're in the second season of Are You Afraid of the Dark? I mean, I was a fan of it growing up back in the 90s. So what was that initial reaction when you guys found out that you were going to be in the new cast? I mean, I was so excited because of the nostalgia factor for so many people around the world and how so many people watched it when they were younger. And I kind of wanted to be a part of that for kids nowadays and bring it to the new generation. So I thought it was really exciting. I can speak on behalf of everybody on the set or most everybody on the set to say, you know, we were first and foremost, probably very excited to work during quarantine and, you know, everything going on in the world. And it was just exciting to like get out and like go explore and, you know, shoot this really fun adventure with a great group of people and also a very iconic show, something that's already been established both by the season one of the reboot and by the old 90s series. Totally. And, you know, we said it before, this is such an iconic show. I mean, I was a fan of it growing up. Um, how does it feel to be a part of history? Because I feel like, you know, 10, 20 years from now, people are going to be watching the reboot with their families. Yeah, definitely. I would think that it's a big reputation to live up to uh, season one and the 90s show. Um, I'm a fan. I actually haven't watched like a full, like I've watched bits and like pieces of the 90s version, like doing research on that. And I've watched the full season of Nickelodeon, Are You Afraid of the Dark? And both I was blown away by, and I understand why it's very praised and very iconic. There's a lot of like little clues to um, the earlier seasons. So if you're a fan of the 90s version, you'll also be a fan of this one um, because it's carrying on the same kind of traditions, but it's also adding a totally other twist. There's so much more, like there's a lot more that it covers. There's like romance, there's comedy, there's like it's frightening and scary parts and there's dramatic parts. There's just, it's a whole wide range and it's a crazy wild story. I, I think the show is gonna be super memorable and um, it, it's kind of, it has like a timeless quality to it. So I think, yeah, it'll be enjoyed. People along the way will definitely enjoy it. Yeah, there's not many references to like today's time. Mm -hmm. So I think people in the future will be able to watch it with the same amount of I don't know, with it, it would be the same for kids in the future as it is right now. And it's yeah. also really cool because my one of my best friends, uh, Mia from The Astronauts, yeah. was in the first season. So she was kind of passing along the torch to me whenever she heard I got it while filming The Astronauts. Going off of that, did she give you any tips going in when you had to film? What were some things that she told you? She just said how exciting it was to film and a lot of the same people were filming her show as they are filming the new season. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of, felt like she was just letting me know and comforting me about how comfortable the set is and how much fun it is to be a part of those scary scenes and how the opposite of scary it is. Like right whenever they call cut, everybody starts laughing. So she just kind of told me about that while we were filming The Astronauts and it really hyped me up. And maybe can you touch a little bit on your characters individually, who they are and what we could really expect from them through these episodes? My character, Seth, is a little boy who loves magic and he really wants to be in his older sister's Midnight Society. And he follows them everywhere and I really like his character because he's played by this <laughs> curly hair. My character, Gabby, she is a sporty, smiley girl. Um, she's the town's sweetheart, but she is so over this town. She even works on weekends to save money for college to get out of there. Um, she'll do anything for her friends, and I really look up to her. She is a recovering perfectionist, so she has a lot of standards from her parents, and she tries to live up to those, but sometimes things get in the way, and she makes sacrifices along the series, which you guys will end up seeing lots of those. I play Luke. He's a member of the Midnight Society. And this is basically his life, like outside of normal school where he's kind of, I don't know, looked down upon and um, he's kind of the underdog in this like, in this big world. He's able to kind of take into himself and um, be a part of a group. The main thing that he loves is to spend time with, with his friends. And since he's not super popular at, at school, it's like, it's like such an exciting thing for him. Hannah is a strong, brave, and courageous young woman. She cares a lot about world issues like climate change. And in the show, she overcomes a lot of obstacles of her like own with her younger brother, our relationship build throughout the show, and also just herself. She learns a lot about herself and how to be a better person. Connor is, uh, he's courageous, brave, while in the older series, they fictionalize the stories and they talk about them. 
And there's a lot of uh, meeting around the campfire and that iconic, you know, meeting place for them. We pursue uh, much more than we talk. And I think that Connor represents that really well because he gets bored easily by talking about things and thinking about things and hearing about the legends. He wants to go find them himself. And he's a leader, you know, not a boss, not somebody that tells people what to do, but he's somebody that likes to bring them along with him. And he's also the most obvious leader, not necessarily the best leader, but the most obvious one. And that's gives them some room to explore for the rest of the series once their leader goes missing. Jay is kind of, is, he's Luke's best friend. He's, he's interesting because he's like a nerd, but he's super self-assured. Like he, he doesn't care what people think of him. He likes what he likes and um, he, doesn't, he doesn't care if anybody thinks badly of him. But um, yeah, he's super into comics. He's very nerdy and he loves the idea of like scary adventures, like reading about them. But the idea of actually going and experiencing those things himself, you know, terrifies him. Yeah. And you know, kids, when they're younger, they are sometimes afraid of the dark. Have you ever been afraid of the dark when you were younger? And if so, do you have like any crazy memories or something that really sticks out to you? I think everyone's done this, um, but everyone, when they would turn off the light, like either downstairs or upstairs, you'd rush as fast as you could down or up the stairs to get away from the dark just looking under my bed like as a kid, making sure that there was no one there like in the dark and like looking in my closet. I had um, like an American Girl doll when I was younger and I always thought that it was like possessed when I would sleep or whatever. So in the dark, it would like face me and I'd have to get around and like face it the other way so that it wasn't looking at me while I was sleeping. I would say that was definitely a big fear when I was younger. I'm not gonna lie. I got scared by a lot of Nickelodeon shows when I was a kid. There was one particular episode of SpongeBob SquarePants that's <laughs> living daylights out of me it was the a scary show it was the one where he's like he is number one and they were trying to like dig the guy up and like all the like the the skeletons raised in the grave oh yeah. my gosh i got me so bad we are celeb secrets i need to know if there are any behind the scenes secrets from set i mean we're with each other like like 24 7 while we're filming the show it's like we wake up go to set we see each other all day long then we get home, we sometimes FaceTime, and then we go to sleep. Like it's it's very, we were we were very close throughout the entire entirety of the, the shoot. Every time on set, when it was lunchtime, we would go to like one of the characters' rooms and have lunch together, which is really cool. It kind of felt like we were the characters having lunch a little bit because we were in their, in their rooms. It was really fun. Malia can't stop uh, breaking character and it's the most fun thing in the world. And if anybody's <laughs> all serious, she just knows how to make everyone have a good time because she just, she's a laugher. Beatrice has a problem pronouncing words, which everyone gets a kick out of. Uh, and then I remember for me, everybody, there's there was a running joke on set where nobody could nobody could remember my name. I'm not going to name names who did this, but I'd be called everything except for Parker, Peter, Patrick. Uh, I, I got called a lot of things. And I, you know, I, I, at a certain point, I just responded to anything that started with P. A secret. Not uh, is the Shadow Man. The guy who plays the Shadow Man would lo loves to like dance in his in his suit, which is really funny. So like before a scene, he'll be like you know doing all these like dances, and then like when he when they say action, he like goes back to being all scary. He like literally got into his suit, and because it was like pretty tight knit to his body, uh -huh. it was it was so funny to see him dance because he would like get up. We're about to shoot a really scary scene where we're all supposed to be like crying and running, and he would just start twerking in the middle of the forest, <laughs> like complete break dancing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'll show it. He was like, like doing okay. all that. Stuff. 